Hello Taurus viewers, just bear with my camera for a minute. It usually takes a minute to adjust as I put the cards out. So let's get into it. Whatever the cards want to say, whatever your story is. As always, if you want to book a private reading, just email me. My email is dragonenchantress at AOL.com. That email is right below in the description box below the video. Um, my donation links are also below and I appreciate any donations. So let's see what's going on here. Got the Ten of Pentacles right off the bat. The Fool. Okay, you got, got a lot of good cards coming out. The Ten of Wands. The High Priestess. The Three of Wands. The Five of Cups. The Nine of Swords, the Page of Pentacles, the Nine of Pentacles, put that right up there. Sorry, like I said, just bear with my camera for a minute, it takes a second. And we've got the Two of Cups after that. Okay. What's coming through strongly is if you let go of this, whatever this is, if you let go of this, you're going to get back what you've lost. So for some, this is about work. For others, this is about love. For some, this is like, and I know it's hard. Financially, it's hard. You can't just, you know, most people just can't up and quit their job. It's like you have to have something else lined up. I understand that. Um, I'm not telling you to impulsively quit your job. But some of you are stuck. For those of you that this is about work, some of you are stuck in these like nine to five jobs and you're you're just not happy. Like you just, you dread going to work. And maybe you don't get along with your coworkers or they don't understand you. You don't understand them. There's like a loneliness there for a lot of you is what I'm feeling as well. And it's like, you're just not on track with your destiny. It's like, you're not, I feel like if, if For those of you that this is about work, if this is your energy group that is, you know, only take it if it resonates. Don't try to make it fit. It's either your story or it's not, you know what I mean? So make sure it's your energy group. But um, but anyway, yeah, it, it just feels like it's like a stagnant nine to five job where there's like you're not getting promoted. You're not really moving up. You're just kind of there like you're not really happy. Like, it's not something that you really want to be doing. It's not something that makes you feel alive, that sparks your passion. You know, if anything, it probably makes you feel kind of exhausted and numb. And I'll get into, the, for those of you that it's about love, I'll get into that in just a second. But it just feels like like your spirit guides want you on track with your destiny. They want you, some of them, for some of you, that could be child care, that could be psychology, that could be psychic work even. You know, because we have the high priest, you're represented by the high priestess, so... For a lot of you, you know, your path might be spiritual. It might be something to do with like psychic work or some kind of healing work, something that would really make an impact on the world. And I feel like you're just kind of getting further and further from your path with this nine to five job. It's just like draining your soul. You know what I mean? And um, like I said, I know it's difficult. I know you can't just up and quit this job. But for some, it's like I feel like you invested so much into this that it's hard to let go like I feel like at some point for a lot of you you guys did feel like this was going to be your ten of pentacles then you've got the fool here this new start I'm led to to interpret this in a couple different ways so so for a lot of you I feel like this could be like something that you invested in maybe you invested with a shady business partner or you just invested in something like maybe you went to college and you you know got out of college and you you started doing this job that you trained for and now that you're doing it you're like oh this actually doesn't resonate with me anymore I changed while I was in college I don't really want to do this anymore and so you feel a little bit lost you're like well I put all my eggs in this basket I put all my time and effort into this basket into having this new start and it's like what do I do now but um you know sometimes it's just a learning experience I mean I I went to college too for for criminal justice and psychology and I you know, completely changed paths after I got out, but it was a really good, important experience for me. I'm glad I did it, but it's not my, my, you know, destined path. You know, and I'm getting similar energy here for you guys. 
where it's just, and again, it could be like a shady business partner or a bad business deal or just something that you, you know, really invested in. Like you really thought this was going to be financially abundant, stable for you. You thought you were going to have this new start and it feels like it's just, it's just weighing you down. It's just a burden. And, you know, what I'm getting here is that when you let go of this, it's going to be replaced by something better. So it could be like, you know, maybe you, maybe you're going into business and you're, holding on to this one person that you want to go into business with, even though you're, you know that they're not good with money, but you want to hold on to them because, you know, they're, they're your best friend or you guys are close or, or, you know, they have the same goals as you, you know, let go of what's convenient and step out of your comfort zone is, is what I'm feeling with this. So it just feels like you're holding on to the familiar is what I'm getting with this overall reading and it's keeping you stagnant. For others, and again, I know that you can't just up and leave your job. I know it's not that simple, but it's kind of saying like take the steps to to see what else is out there and maybe, you know, maybe while you're doing this job, try to try to get some training or something in the field that you actually that actually resonates with your soul. You know, just just you don't have to see the whole staircase, just take that first step. Just take the first step into making this physical. You know, a lot of times we have all these ideas and all these aspirations, but we don't write them down. We don't study them. We don't make them physical. It's just, it's just like a fantasy. So you have to take that energy and make it physical, even if it's just taking the first step, even if it's just submitting some resumes or, um, or taking a class to, in, in a subject that you think you, you might, you're, you're drawn to that feels like your destined path. It's like, just, just take that first step. You don't have to see the whole staircase. You don't have to be a master overnight, but just get started, I think, is the thing. For others, this is about love. So some of you are holding on to a karmic partner and, you know, because I just keep hearing like what, like whatever you let go of is going to be replaced. The overall energy I get, whether it's a job, whether it's a, a, a toxic best friend, whether it's a toxic father or mother figure, whether it's... um you know, uh, a toxic love, whatever it is, it's like you're holding on to a karmic situation or a karmic person. And that karmic cycle is trying to wrap up. But I feel like you're, it's like you were, I know, I know it's hard because I know sometimes our spirit guides just kind of take control. And I know it's a pain in the ass when things don't go as we planned. Like I get it. You know what I mean? Don't shoot the messenger. I'm just telling you what I'm channeling and what's coming through. You know, these messages aren't from me. This is, this is what I channel. This isn't, this isn't just my own opinion. This is like what, what the energy is telling me that's going on. You know what I mean? So take it as it is. Um, like I said, it's either your story or it isn't, but, um, but yeah, it's like, it just feels like you're holding on to something because you put so much time and effort and energy into it. And I feel like some of you are afraid to pick up the pieces. You're afraid of letting that job go. You're afraid that, you know, you're afraid of letting that that father or mother figure go because what if you don't find that with someone else, even though they're toxic? or And it could be an actual parent. Some of you are probably struggling to let go of, like, a family member because you're like, well, what if I don't, like, what if I don't have anybody? What if I'm alone? And it's like, well, they're toxic, though. They're draining you. You know what I mean? Like, they're, 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 there's more harm than good here. You know, you have to weigh the pros and cons. And the cons are by far outweighing the pros with this situation. For others, it's like a karmic partner where it's like you kind of know that this cycle is wrapped up. But I almost feel like you're like you're fighting against the current is what I get for this energy group. It's like you're fighting the natural flow of things. You're like, wait a minute. No, I thought this was supposed to be my my be all end all. This is supposed to be my my the person I marry. This was supposed to be my... um you know, the, the job that led to promotion and led to financial abundance. This was supposed to be the right house for me or the right, you know, the right this, the right that. And so it's like there's this like stubbornness and this resistance where you're holding on. You're holding on to these like red cords here. It's like you're holding on to something that was karmic. You know, I think there was an important something there that needed to, to come out, like maybe like healing, some kind of important lesson for you or for them. Um, but it just feels like it's, it's, it's past its expiration date. And I know, like, I hate hearing that when I watch readings, I understand that hurts, but 
you do have people in situations that are meant for you lifelong, that, that are meant to be long term for you. You know what I mean? Like you do have people that you're meant to marry. You do have people that you're meant to, to have these 10, 20, you know, lifelong relationships with. You do have, you know, this, this job that you're meant to do for the rest of your life. It's not, I know people get, I, I understand the frustration. I know it gets tiring when you have these situations and it's like, okay, time to let this go, time to let that go. But it's like, you do have situations coming in that are actually just meant to make you happy and meant to just be, you know, lifelong for you. But this, this one, whatever it is, is not one of those things. This is a karmic situation where it's like, you know, it's over whether this is a person or a job, like, you know that this karmic cycle has completed. It's like it's completed and you're still, it's like the boat's docked and you're, you're still just chilling there. It's like it's over though. There's, there's nothing, it's not going up from here, whatever it is. I hate to say it like that. I know it's harsh, but it, it's, it's like it's, it's not going to change from here. It's not going up from here. You know what I mean? It's like, it could be like a relationship where it's like, you know you want to leave and they want to leave too. And... You know, there's no, there's no spark there. There's no passion. There's no love. There's just, you guys are just kind of sick of each other, but you're, it's familiar. And it, it just seems like whatever the situation is, I mean, there's different stories here. And I want to get in more into this energy down here too. I don't want to stay too stuck on, on these cards. But whatever it is, it just seems like something where it's like you put so much time and energy and effort into it. And I almost feel like you made it part of your personality or like you almost made it to the point where it's just like, like you feel like that's just like you had like an uh, idea in your head of what your life was going to look like. And it involved this situation or job or person or house or whatever this energy is here for you specifically. And now that it's not, I feel like it's like so unfamiliar. It's like so you're kind of panicking a little bit where it's like the control issues are kind of coming out. And, you know, you have two paths ahead. It's like you can hold on to the control issues, but... Things aren't going to get better if you do. It's going to be the same stagnant, depressing situation, the same dead end job. You're not going to get the promote like, and you know, if this is for you, like I said, don't try to make it fit if it doesn't resonate. Like you're going to know if this is your story, but, um, then this would be like a job or relationship where it's like, you really don't feel like yourself. Like you really don't feel happy. You just feel kind of stuck. You know what I mean? Like you wouldn't know, you would be able to sense that energy, but, um, but yeah, it's like you can hold on to it, but it's it's going to be the same old story. Like this person that hasn't been appreciating you, hasn't been loving you properly, they're they're not going to wake up one day and be like, "Oh, like this this is my person after all." Like I think you already know like whatever this is, it's 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 been over. It's been over for a long time, but you've just been holding on to it even though it's like you're watering these dead roses. And it's like, "I'm sorry, I know that's harsh. I hate giving harsh readings, but sometimes Sometimes when I channel, like, my the people that I channel, it's like your spirit guides come through and they want to give you that kind of kick where, I mean, I know it's harsh, I know it's upsetting, I know it's uncomfortable, but sometimes you need that kind of push out of your comfort zone because you're, you're not on your, if you're in this energy, you're not really on your destined path. You're holding, you know, you're watering dead roses. It's just like, you know, you're thinking it's going to get better or that they're going to come back to life and they're just not. Um, but yeah, what I'm getting here though, I mean, it is positive overall though, because what I'm getting here is when you, cause you put so, like all these eggs into this basket, like you had this idea of what your life was going to look like, be it with a person or a situation, whatever it was. It's like you, you had it all planned out. Like you thought it was predictable and now you're realizing it's not. But when you let go of this situation, it's going to be replaced. Like if you're letting go of a toxic family member, you're going to probably meet a friend that's like family. If you're letting go of a toxic karmic partner, you're going to end up meeting someone that's actually going to be like a, a potential life partner, someone that's actually going to appreciate you and love you and understand you and be by your side. You know, if you're letting go of a toxic job, it's well, I mean, you know, don't don't up and quit your job. But I mean, you you have another path that you can go down doing something for some I hear childcare, like working with children or animals for some but it's like you have another path that you can go down doing something that you love, doing something that doesn't feel draining and exhausting. It's like, so if this is a job, it feels like a job where it's like, you're not, you don't feel like you're contributing anything to society. You feel like your talents are being wasted at this job. 
you know, when you can have a job where you actually feel like you're making an impact on the world, where you actually feel happy and proud of what you're doing. But, um, but yeah, when you let these burdens go, when you let, when you, and again, it's, you know, for some, I'm not saying it to up and I'm not saying that this can happen overnight, but you need to make, start making the changes. You know, if you're in a relationship and it's toxic and you guys are living together, I'm not saying to go move out and go live in a homeless shelter tomorrow. I'm saying like, look for apartments, save money. Even if you have to save money behind this person's back, do it. Like do what you need to do to get out of that situation. Start, start taking the steps to get out of whatever this energy is. You know what I mean? And if you can do it overnight, like if you can safely do it overnight, do it. You know, sometimes you just, I'm sure for some of you that that is the way to go for some, you know, if you're in an abusive relationship for some of you, you probably are. And you know, sometimes that is the way where you just have to go. You just have to pack your things and you just have to take your pets and just go. And that's it. You know, I know it's not easy, but there are some situations where, yeah, it's going to be like an overnight change. And for others, it's going to take a little bit longer. But the point is that you start taking the steps. Um, and it will be hard. It will be scary. It will be upsetting. But I feel like I feel like it'll be upsetting for a while because you had this idea that this was going to go somewhere for you, whatever this was. But I honestly think that you're going to feel a sense of freedom in the long run. Like you're going to have anxiety maybe and be a little bit upset at first. But like in the long run, you're going to be like, oh, my God, like I what was I doing watering these dead roses? Like, why was why was I doing that? Why was I? Why was I in that energy? Why did I why did I hold on to that situation for so long? It's like you're going to, you know, it's scary stepping out of your comfort zone. Like you're kind of in limbo at first. You're like, okay, like I'm letting go of the control issues. I'm letting things flow. Like what comes next? But then, you know, eventually you get to that point where you just feel like a sense of freedom where you're like, oh my God, like I was in stagnant energy and I was so numb or so depressed. I didn't even realize I was in stagnant energy. It's like you're just used to this by now. You know, and you have to kind of pull yourself out. You have to spark that passion and step out of your comfort zone and pull yourself out of this. You know, let go of this burden. This has been weighing you down more than you've even realized. And I feel like when you get in the high priestess energy, like you are the high priestess, you know what I mean? Like you're going to be, could be studying, but also just like using your knowledge and your intuition and yeah, letting go of this burden. Letting go of this, whatever this is that's caused you anxiety, depression, um, anger, even I'm hearing, um, insomnia, just, you know, just being numb for some of you, for some of you, it's actually like inner turmoil, but for others, it's like, you've just adapted to the point where you just, you don't even have the look at this energy. It's like, he or she is like distraught, but it's like, they don't even have the energy to be distraught. They're just like, like numb. Like, this is just like, oh, this is just how my life is. Like, this is just normal. You know what I mean? It's like, you kind of have to have that spark where you're like, oh, wait, this isn't me. Like your soul is trying to come through and be like, no, there's more out there. You need to get out of this, this situation, you know? And especially if it's like an abusive relationship, like, I mean, someone that hits women or men could be male or female, but someone who's abusive is just, it's a no go. It, it's like, they're not going to get better and appreciate you someday. And I'm, I'm not saying most of you are in an abusive relationship, but there's probably a couple that are in this energy group that are. And it's like, you're going to look back. It's it's rough. It's rough leaving. I get it. But you're going to look back and you're going to be like, oh my God, why did I ever even, why would I ever tolerate that? Why would I ever want that person? You know, why, why did I even feel that connection with that person? Like you're, you're, the energy is going to shift for you, but you have to step out of your comfort zone and get yourself out of whatever the situation is. You know, and eventually it's hard. It takes time, but eventually you start resonating when you, when you don't tolerate abuse, when you like step up to it. And I know it's difficult because if you live together, like I get it, you know, I've been in those situations. Like, you know, I'm not attracted to that anymore, but like when I was younger, I was, I totally understand it, you know, and it's hard. It's hard, especially when you're living with someone, it's hard to get out. I understand that. But, um, but, you know, when you do get yourself out of it, when you do just pack your bags when they're at work and just go, I know it's not easy. I know it's terrifying. But when you do that, it's like you start, you change that pattern because you're saying, no, I don't resonate with this. I won't tolerate this. This isn't for me. This doesn't feel right for me. And 
you know, it takes some effort to change those patterns, but eventually you just, you start to get to the point where you're just, you'd laugh at people like, like, like you'd laugh at men or women that are abusive like that. Like you wouldn't, like you wouldn't resonate with them. You'd be like, Ooh, no, I would never live with that person. Like you would just, you just get to that point where it just doesn't resonate with you, where you, you, you resonate with better people. And I'm not talking down on people that are in those situations that are, that are used to being abused. Like it's hard. I've been there. I understand it. I'm just saying though, that I'm just, I'm just, you know, giving this harsh truth that it, it's not something that changes though. It's not some, this person isn't going to wake up one day and be like, Oh, I, I screwed up. I need to stop being abusive. Like, Abusive people are just abusive. I've it's extremely rare for them to change. Um and they always I don't know, I feel like it's I mean I know people say that it's like a like with with like their anger, like they just can't control it. But honestly, if you think about it, there's something I was reading the other day where it's it was saying like abusive people can control it though. Don't you notice that? Like if you're in, if you're one of these people in an abusive relationship, and I'm sorry, I know not all of you are, but I want to get to this for those that are. And then I'll focus more on this. But it's like, have you guys noticed, like, if you, for those of you that are in an abusive relationship, have you noticed, like, they can control it totally fine around your friends, around your family, around people when they're trying to gaslight you. Like, when you guys are out in public, they can control it. They can make themselves look bad. It's only behind closed doors that they are physically abusive. So they have control. You know what I mean? Like, they're able to control it. It's, it's an excuse to say that they just can't control it. Um, I feel like that's a lot, I mean, I feel like for most, that's something that they just, they try to excuse themselves by, by saying that, by trying to, you know, blame their, blame their ch childhoods or whatever they've been through. But the thing is, there's plenty of people like, I have a lot of anger. I know a lot of people that have a lot of anger, but I would still never hit somebody, you know? Like there's, there's people that have like a world of anger, but they still just they have that moral code well they where they just will not hit someone like it would just never occur to them to hit you like it's like it's just the farthest thing from their mind and you want someone from like that so like in my mind like if someone ever hit me that would be it that I'd be done just because at this point in my life at least like I know in the past I wouldn't be but at this point in my life I would be done because it's like that just that tells me about their moral code it's not the fact that they hit me it's just the fact that they that that's their moral code, that that idea, that's, that's a solution that's in their mind. That's something that they can pull on whenever they're upset. And you have to kind of keep that in mind because I feel like people in abusive relationships often go through the honeymoon phase. There's like these cycles where you go a couple months where they haven't hit you because everything's going well. But, but soon as, as soon as they have a trigger, as soon as something comes up, that's their go-to is to be physically abusive. So you need to keep that in mind. In my opinion, someone that's physically abusive, they're not going to stop. That's always going to be there. Even if it doesn't come out for two months or two years, it's it's part of their moral code. And so you have to kind of understand that. That's who they, that's part of who they are. That's something that, that they feel is okay. It's something they feel is acceptable. But um, anyway, sorry, I just want to put that out there. I know most of you are probably not in that situation. Most of you are probably in... You know, most for most of you, this is probably a job or just a karmic situation where it might not be abusive, but it's just kind of like the relationship is, has come to a close. But um, I felt like someone needed to hear that about, you know, because there are a couple people in this energy group that are kind of holding on because like, oh, it's like, oh, he, he or she hasn't hit me in, in two or three months. Like they're, they're really, you know, they're doing this better. You know, things are, things are better, but it's like, okay. And then what if you piss them off? What if, what happens if you guys you know, okay, you guys are doing well financially right now. What happens if you go back to financially struggling? Are they, what's their energy like then? It's easy for this person to change when, or to pretend like they've changed when, you know, things are good, but how do they react under stress? Like that's, that's something as empaths, it's like, it's something that you have to take into account because so many empaths just see who someone is at the core or see who they used to be before their abusive childhood or see the potential who they could be. But you need to take into account the day-to-day -day actions and behaviors and the whole, the bigger picture, you know, like you, you can't just ignore the red flags or the things that you don't want to see. You have to really be honest with yourself, even when it hurts. 
and then make the changes you need to make to get yourself out of that situation. And, and like I said, I know I've been there. I know it's not easy to get out, but it's something that you have to do if you want. It's just something that has to be done. There's no way around it. Like if you, you know, if you don't want to find yourself 10 years stuck with this person or having kids with this person that you're not even happy with and just being just drained and hating your life, you know, if you want a future, I know it's not easy. I know it's for some people, it's not something that you can just do overnight, but it's something that has to be done if you want to live the life that you were meant to live. If you want to, to find, you know, your, then we have the two of cups over here. If you want to find your actual true love, your actual soulmate or twin flame, you got to let go of the karmic that's holding you back. If you want to actually find your dream job, find something that's meant for you, you have to step out of your comfort zone and let go of this, this stagnant nine to five. And, you know, for some, I mean, it's, it's, I, I know that's, I know you can't up and quit your job, but it's like, just take the first steps. Just, just start applying, start looking into things, start, start, just make it physical. I feel like a lot of, like for this energy group, I feel like you guys have a lot of ideas of what you could do, but it's like, it's just kind of like these sparks that come from your spirit. It's like you have like these like intuitive kind of nudges like, oh, I could, I could maybe take this class or I could take this job or maybe I could um, go to this social group and meet new people, you know, like, okay, if I let go of this toxic friend, I could go meet new people. But it's like you guys end up like kind of getting distracted or it's like you lose the thoughts, like just write them down, even just get a notebook, something that's just private, just just for you or like a diary or something and just write these intuitive nudges down. And I think a lot of you are going to actually see a pattern of what your intuition is trying to trying to lead you to. Because for some, it's like there's multiple issues that you that, you know, you're dealing with and you're like, 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 say for some, like you've lost your creative spark, like maybe some of you are artists and you used to write or sing or draw and you're just so numb and so exhausted that you don't do it anymore. And some of you are maybe also at the, simultaneously, you know, wishing you had better friends. And then you have like this intuitive nudge, like, oh, what if I took this like poetry? What if I went to this poetry um, night? Or what if I took this like art class or this drawing class? What if I took this, um, this, this music class? What if I went to, to, you know, this festival or this yoga night. And it's like, if you look at it, it's like your spirit guides are trying to resolve multiple issues for, for you. It's like one, that's going to bring the creative spark back. And two, you're going to meet like-minded people. You're going to meet people that are more like on your level that you have things in common with people that aren't going to try to change you. Um, so yeah, really take note of these nudges and just take the first step, even if it's, you know, just, you know, even if it's just baby steps, you just, you gotta, you gotta let go of the comfort zone. I know things aren't going as you expected. I know it's not what you would plan, but, but if you can really let go of whatever this, this stagnant and possibly even toxic situation is, then it's going to be replaced by something better. Cause whatever this is, it's like, it's just been, it's just been draining you. And when you let it go, it's like, you have the ability to just to, to manifest the world as your oyster, to manifest something else that's that's going to um, you know resonate with you. The, the 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 phrase that keeps coming through so strongly in this reading again and again is is just you know your spirit guides telling you, I will replace whatever you let go of. Don't be afraid to let go of it because it's going to be replaced. It's like Like I'm pagan, but I'm and I I'm pagan, but I believe in Jesus. I do. Like I believe in multiple gods and goddesses, and I believe in the angelic realm and, and different realms. And I'm I'm drawn to that meme where it's like Jesus has this um this teddy bear behind his back, this giant teddy bear, and this little girl is holding on to this like old tattered broken teddy bear, and she doesn't want to let go of it. But it's like if she lets go of it, she gets like everything that she wants. He or she. You know, I'm kind of drawn to like that energy. It's like you're you're holding on to the control issues. You're holding on to the stagnant situation, even though it's not making you happy because you've put so much time and energy and effort into it. And I, I think that some of you are afraid like that when you let go, it's it's going to be hard to to pick up the pieces like you don't know. It's like you based like an identity on this almost. It's like it's become a part of you that you're like, well, what, who am I without that? And it's like, it's going to be a discovery process. You're going to have to find yourself again, but that's okay. It's okay to step into the unknown. It's okay to, to push yourself out of your comfort zone. You know, even if you don't have all the answers, 
you're you're sooner or later you're going to feel a sense of freedom and you're going to see just how much this thing was holding you back so i hope that makes sense um you know, please share this. Maybe someone on your on your social media. Maybe you have like a friend that this is in this energy group. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Um, as always, if you want to email me, my email is below in the description box. So yeah, please like, share, comment, subscribe. Thanks.